everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of the Style Shaker. I try it out for you and share my honest review so you have a better sense of what to buy and of course what not to buy. Today I am back with an update for the Bare Minerals Illuminating Mineral Veil Powder. The first review I did of this was, um, was pretty basic. It was in the very beginning of the channel and I was sitting on the floor and you couldn't see anything. So it had 24,000 views and I figured, looks like Bare Minerals is a hot topic. So I thought, why not update that little puppy? You know what I mean? This from the brand is an ultra fine milled powder used to set makeup and deliver satin matte finish. It's $20 for this. I used to like it. Do I still like it? Does it do what it says it's going to do? If you're thinking about buying this and you want to find out, then stick around and here we go. FYI, I purchased this product. No one's paying me to say the following. You're getting my honest opinion. As always, if you enjoy seeing these reviews, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support. I'm going to run through the Style Shaker scorecard on this. It's a quick and easy system. It has seven questions. I created it because it helps keep these reviews objective and it's the foundation of all the reviews. So if you wanna see more on that, click the link below. And the first question is ingredients. How do they look? Are there any red flags here? This is a cosmetic grade cornstarch based powder. I'll talk a little bit about that later on. Some of these setting powders tend to be more silica based some are just mica. This one is cosmetic grade cornstarch. There's some stuff out there about just taking cornstarch that you can buy in a grocery store and putting it on your face. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a better way to hack that. So I'm not recommending that. There are claims out there that there's a bunch of benefits from using cosmetic grade cornstarch. It's really great at oil absorption, provides a smoother texture or so I've read and more. Overall though, if you look at the list of ingredients, it's very short and it set off no alarm bells for me. Next up, coverage. How is coverage? Claims to blur things out, pores, fine lines, stuff like that, and give this soft focused look. There are four different finishes. I mentioned this, but I have the illuminating finish. While it's blurring, it's also supposed to give this illuminating glow. And I will tell you, it definitely did light up the skin. You can kind of see it when I have the application video. There's lighting in here, so you can't see it as well. But I did see a lighting up of the skin, and that was thanks to teeny tiny little mineral particles that look like the tiniest little glitter flecks you've ever, ever seen in your entire life. They sparkled on top of moisturizer and they did create sort of an optical illusion, which is what it's supposed to do. The other thing I noticed here, and I just want to add it, some setting powders, when you open the container and just, just go like that, it just, it just fell on my cat. You see these huge plumes of powder kind of poof up in the air. I didn't see that happen here, which is nice. So you don't have a mess of powder flying everywhere. Overall for coverage, it received a three out of five on the scorecard. Next up, how the finish come out? Tried it a couple of different ways. One was over moisturizer, which I think it worked very nicely with gave a nice little illuminating glow. It did kind of what it said it would do. The other way that I applied this was over a complexion color product. So something like a foundation, tinted moisturizer or a BB cream or a CC cream. So I applied it over that. That's where the finish really didn't look so great. And by didn't look so great, I mean that it sat a little bit strangely, it gathered, it just didn't blend with the color-based product. So while it's supposed to give you that soft focus look, I think it did the job over a moisturizer that had no color in it. Also, maybe it was a lighter weight compared to putting it on top of a foundation, even a concealer, it didn't really work over concealer, which is how I used to use this back in the day. So it kind of was a letdown here. Overall, it received a two out of five on the scorecard. Next up, does it blend and build well? Does it play well with other products? Specifically setting powders, or it's important that they sort of mesh well with other products. Are they gonna work with everything? No, but they should work with the basics. And like I just mentioned, moisturizer, yes worked very well, they played well together, they were friends, they had a good time. If I use something a little bit thicker like a concealer, if I used a foundation, no. Basically, it worked sometimes, it didn't work others. Received a three out of five on the scorecard. Next up, does it control oil and shine? So yes, it did. I had an eight hour wear test and I tried it for a few days because the first day after eight hours, I had some shine on the T-zone, but the crazy thing was my skin was so dried out, it started flaking specifically along the chin and then on the cheeks. It looked 
so dry, so flaky. That is really based off of my skin type, my skin barrier, where it's at. While it did kind of control shine a little bit for a good amount of the day, by the very end of the day is when I started to see flaking every time I used it. So of course I didn't want to use it. I think it just sucked up all the oil way too well on my skin. The other thing that I want to mention here, which is kind of interesting, I went down a rabbit hole researching why that was happening to my skin. Was it something else I was using on my skin? You know how I mentioned silica-based setting powders versus cosmetic grade cornstarch-based setting powders? It's really hard to say that very, very fast. Silica-based, a lot of people don't like because they can have skin reactions. And when I talk about silica, there's the other kind of narrative out there that silica is really, really bad. Question it, look around for research for yourself. There's a lot of conflicting information, but still. I usually don't make blanket statements like that over here because it can be very personal to your skin type where your skin's at. When you look at silica, I'm not talking about crystalline silica, which seems to be the one that causes more of an issue out there. Other reason that people won't use silica is because there is a flashback that happens if you're using flash photography. Now, am I out getting flash pictures taken of myself? No, not really. I don't really see much of a flashback when I use silica-based powders, so I think you have to apply a lot of it on and do that whole baking thing. But that's another thing I think you should know if you're concerned about that. So in terms of controlling shine, again, it was sort of down the middle. It almost went a little bit too far, but because that's so personally based, I don't wanna ding this product. I wanna keep it objective. It received a three out of five on the scorecard. Did it help makeup last longer? It was one of the things that was supposed, to, well, it was supposed to set it. They don't have in their claims, although one of the claims on the website is that they created clean beauty, bare minerals. It created clean beauty, they created it. Huh, hmm, I have no response to that. Overall, I don't feel like it helped my makeup set and last longer. It wasn't something that really wowed me. On that, it received a two out of five on the scorecard. Is this a consciously created product? So it has a lot of benefits here. Cruelty-free, there's no talc in here. Vegan, gluten-free, so it's got a lot of stuff to it. Um, the only problem is this is a plastic container. While it is probably recyclable, it, there are no refills currently available. And I feel like this is such a good product to have refills available on. My standards are pretty much set there. And if they don't have a more eco-friendly option like refills, then the product cannot score above a two out of five on the scorecard. So there you have it. The final score here is a 17 out of 30. What is my final verdict? <laughs> Would I recommend this to a friend? Would I buy it again? No, I wouldn't. I think three years ago, whenever that first video was out, I did watch it, but I forgot the date. And again, I am sitting on the floor, just, just talking, just talking about powder, sitting on the floor talking about powder. I liked it. I was at a phase in my journey going into, I'm doing a lot of air quotes, but cleaner beauty, which is totally an unregulated term, but I was just starting in this new, audit phase. It could be because my skin has changed because I've tried so many products. It could just be because the formula might be slightly different. For whatever reason, it didn't work on my skin, mainly because it made it so dry. If it did not make it dry, I would be more inclined to potentially repurchase this. But the other thing is, I used to love it as a setting powder and I can't really set concealer with this. I can't really set a base complexion coverage product with this, like I mentioned. So yeah, it just doesn't fulfill any need for me, <laughs> really, except for maybe giving me a luminous glow for a few hours, but then it just sucks the life out of my skin. I have other powders that I reach for more than this. I have them listed in my Brits Picks Guide, my favorites. I reviewed several of them on the channel. A lot of them are silica based. So yeah, I mean, there's 14E, there's RMS Beauty, there's some more out there that I've tried that I've actually really liked. So that's what the scorecard said. That's what my final verdict was. What do you think about this powder? What do you think about Bare Minerals? Dare I ask, what do you think about Bare Minerals stating that they created clean beauty? I'm just so curious. There's like a whole page on it. It's kind of a big deal. If you have any alternatives or if you have anything to say about this whole cosmetic grade cornstarch versus silica situation, share in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And that is all I have for today's review. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I will see you right back here real soon. Until then, this buggy girly. You gonna say hi? You're just gonna show them your tail. This is a good look.